Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about BRs, as now for many of the new players that might be coming to the game, this probably is going to be very confusing, as admittedly the game has not really explained anything about BRs and how they work at all. So sit back and have some fun. So first of all, we are going to look at low BR. Now this is basically BR1 and 2 combined. Then we've got BR3 that can access BR1 and 2 and BR4 and 5. Then we have got BR4 and 5 which are also grouped together. Basically what this means is that if you're BR1 player that has just started playing the game, you're only going to go up against other BR1 players, BR2 players and occasionally BR3 players. The same goes for if you're playing as BR2. Now for middle BR, BR3 can access all BRs, meaning that it can access BR1 and 2 matches all the way to BR4 and 5 matches. BR5 on the other hand will only be able to play against other BR5 players, BR4 and the occasional BR3 player. Let's look at the equipment that you should have for each BR. So first of all, there are only really two BRs worth playing, and these two BRs are BR2 and BR5. This is because they're at the top of their queue, and playing BR3 is basically just a gamble of getting obliterated in high tier matches, or ruining the fun of other starter players in low tier matches. For the US faction, you are either going to want the Ross Rifle, Springfield 1903A1 USMC Rifle, or in my opinion, the standard M1903 Springfield Rifle. These rifles have in my opinion the best sights, and to be honest, hip power doesn't really matter because they're all bolt actions. Now you could go for the Enfield P40 or M1917 Enfield. But these two, in my opinion, get let down by their bulky sights. Now, well, the sniper, for snipers, uh, the, just the standard M1903A1 Springfield or Springfield M1903A3 are just about fine. They do the job done, they, they what snipers are for, and they execute that job quite greatly, actually. Now, for assaulters, it is debatable whether you want to have an assaulter squad in your US loadout for the VR. This is because that even though you get the M3A1 submachine gun, which is heavily underrated by the way, or the Lanchester later on, they are pretty weak compared to other weapons in the US loadout. Or even other submachine gun guns of other nations such as the MP40 from Germany, the Type 28 SMG from Japan. So in summary, you can use assaulters if you want to, but you're probably better off going with other squads and other weapons. Now we've got the machine guns. So for low BR, we get the Vickers Berthier, Bren Mark 1, and the Bren Mark 2. All of these machine guns have the standard hit power of 12, but have questionable recoil and horrible sights as half of your screen is taken up by the magazine. Now in real life, this was a powerhouse of a weapon, but in a listed, it's just not great. I mean, I know some people that really love it, so because of that, I'm just gonna say it's questionable. Next up, we've got the heavy weapons brow. Now, there's only two things really worth having here. The first one is the M1 bazooka, and I'm choosing this over the Piat because the Piat is notorious, and I mean really bad for aiming in close quarters. You cannot aim at anything. Um, you basically just have to do a wild guess and then get it wrong so many times. So yeah, don't don't use the Piat, guys, because. Uh, yeah, so it, it's really bad at aiming in close quarters, so because of that, I'm choosing the M1 Bazooka. Next up is the Studbaker. Studbaker? Studbaker? I, I don't know. Comment on this one. Next up is the Studbaker 6U1. This is an APC that functions as a mobile rally point and can hold a driver and two riflemen. This rest. The rest of the upgrades are basically personal preference. So for the first upgrade, I personally chose the Salter instead of just Machine Gunner and Operator. But the second optional upgrade path, I chose the Sniper instead of the Medic and Assaulter. And for the third upgrade path, I chose the AT Gunner instead of the Machine Gunner. Next up are Vehicle Squads. So 
vehicle squads you have to assign between tanks and planes. If you want to go for a plane then you're probably better off going for the P-38G variant as that is the my opinion the best plane as it has six m8 rockets and plenty of machine guns and cannons at the front it is a competent fighter and it is really good at cas or close air support if you want to go for a tank however you are best off going for the crusader this is because of its mobility it's really good at speed it has really good speed and it's really good at turning and it also has relatively good armaments for its br has a maximum crew of three which does sound small but really for that size of a tank i don't think you can fit more and i don't think you need more and it also has pretty good he rounds for its br as well as good penetration against enemy tanks however as with almost all tanks don't be surprised when you die as physically as physically all tanks are very vulnerable to explosion packs anti-tank mines, TNT charges, and enemy tanks in general. So yeah. Now for Germany's BR, uh, low BR to be exact, the best rifles are the pre-war Kar 98K as well as standard Kar 98K. If you want to, you can even go for the Mannheim rifle because it's also quite a good rifle. And for snipers again, the standard Kar 98 with scope mount is just fine really that you don't need anything else it's a bit like let's say sniper it's, it's good at what it does it's, yeah it's average and now for germany assaulters now actually german assaulters are actually worth playing as you get the fnab 43 which is again heavily underrated the mp38 and the mp40 both of which are basically the exact same guns, so if you have the MP38, you're, you're fine. It's, there's no difference between the MP38 and the MP40. But anyways, uh, these are good because like they can easily clear out a room and have a like, decent hit power. You probably need like two to three hits to kill a soldier, which for this VR is pretty good. Next up, we've got the machine gunners. Now, this time, both machine guns are actually quite good because you get the Breda Mod 30, and the MG13. The Breda Module 30 has a lot of horizontal recoil as well as vertical recoil and to be honest you're better off just firing bullets after bullets singly so like just fire single bullets don't spray into a soldier that's 100 or 50 meters away it's not gonna hit. Now next up we've got the heavy weapon section. There's not really anything worth using as Germany has arguably the worst anti-tank lineup for the low BR. However, there is the SD KFZ-7, which is another APC. It can hold a driver, which by the way is basically an assaulter, and two riflemen. For the optional upgrade parts, I usually choose the assaulter over the radio operator and machine gunner for the first upgrade path. For the second upgrade path, I choose the sniper over the assaulter and medic. For the third, I chose the machine gunner over the anti-tank soldier. Now for the vehicles, there are again tanks and aircraft to choose from. For the tanks, you have two tanks to choose from. First of all is the SDKFZ-2342 tank. It's the, it's a Puma. Don't don't say what I just said. F SD, KFZ, uh, all of that. It, it's it's the Puma, just call it a Puma. And the Panzer 3N. The benefit of the Puma is there's nothing as great as its maneuverability, which means that you can flank with it and have a whole load of fun blocking the enemy's path towards objective. Its cannon is okay, however, it's it's not bad. And its armor, well, its armor is bad. A 50 caliber bullet can easily penetrate it. So yeah, it's 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 arm. You have to be very wise with how you play with it. So yeah. However, that is where the Panzer 3N is best at. Although it's nothing close to the Soviet KV-1, it does have a good cannon that can penetrate most of its enemies, and also has okay armor, particularly to the front. And it even has more armor than the next one in line, the Panzer 3J1. 
This is why I chose the earlier version of it. However, this does come at a hefty cost as this tank is quite challenging to move around on the battlefield. If you really want to play as a pilot, like if you really, really want to play as a pilot, you're best stop going for the JU lineup, the best of which being the JU 87R2, simply because it's the latest of the low VR lineup. So now let's look at the Soviet lineup. First of all, the absolute best rifle for the Soviets, and arguably the best rifle in the entire game is the Winchester M1895. Its hit power is scary at 24.3 and is actually a lever action rifle which makes it so that it is quite a lot faster to shoot at than a normal bolt action such as the Mosin M19-30 rifle. So there's not really a debate on equipping that on every soldier that can't have a submachine gun or anything else. Next up, we have the snipers, which again, the standard Mosin M19-1-30 sniper is more than good enough, and it does the job like every other sniper. Next up, we'll be looking at submachine guns for the Soviets, and let me tell you, the Soviets excel at submachine guns regardless of their BR. Whether it's BR-1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, they're all amazing. So for BR-2, we have two, the PPS-42 and the PPS-43. And although they look equivalent, they do not function the same. Uh, actually, that, that's the wrong way to put it. I, I, I mean, there are some differences when you actually use them. For instance, the PPS-43 has 700 rate of fire compared to the 600 of the PPS-42. Now, this is actually debatable on which rate of fire is better as some might say that the 600 rate of fire is more controllable, which I mean, yeah, I, I agree to be honest, but there we go. For the recoil, the PPS-42 has a tiny bit less than its neighbour, I, I don't really notice it to be honest, and I equipped all of my equit. I did this last video, I said equit, oh my, I have a problem with saying equip, uh, there we go, equip, but for me, I equipped all of my assaulters with the PPS-43 variant. I, I just love myself a fast rate of fire. I, I like I like fast rates of fire. What can I say? Now for the heavy weapons of the USSR, there are two worth using. The first is the PTRS-41, which is essentially the most powerful semi-automatic gun in the game. It is built for penetrating tanks, which it does very well but you can also use it for the memes as a semi-automatic rifle as it has a hit power of 150. This means that you can actually snipe players across the map with just one shot and it's actually really fun to use. I, I would actually recommend it, it's, it's really fun to use. Next up is the Gars HAA or Gars AAA, whatever you want to say, uh, which is the Soviet's version of an APC. And it basically has the same upgrades as the ones that I said before, so I'm not going to go through that again, I'm not going to repeat it. If you forgot, then you can go back into the video. For the vehicles, I have the T-28 and the T-50 tanks. Out of the two tanks I just said, I like the T-50 more as it has sloped armor and is also quite competent 25mm cannon. But the main reason why I like this so much is because of its mobility. Compared to the T-28, it can speed across the battlefield with ease. So now for the Japanese faction, um, I do have some explaining to do, do I? Uh, I as you can see, I've not really been playing it and I really should do some work. I, I really have a lot, quite some work to do before I can actually unlock everything in BR2, which is, um, yeah, that, that's my bad, sorry. Uh, however, I have tested out the Type 99 rifle late, and for me, the Type 1 rifle just has a better sights. However, sights are also always a personal matter, so you're probably going to be better off testing it yourself. So yeah, uh, I don't really feel qualified to give you guys any advice for what you want to do with Japan low tier. Uh, however, one thing that I can say 
is that most of you will probably hate the sight of the Arasaka Type 38 Harbine and rifle variants. So as soon as you can, try to switch out all of your rifles for the Type 1 rifle. But there we go, that is basically my advice on what to do for your loadout in a listed. Right, so now that we've covered the basics, we are going to look at some of the issues, fundamental issues even, of the BR system. Now the first issue we're going to address is BR3, because I think it is one of the most prevalent issues in the entire game. You can access all matches regardless of their BR. This means that if you get down into a low tier match, you're probably able to destroy almost every person and every vehicle that you see on the battlefield. As you'll have much more inferior equipment compared to your own, this means that for BR1 players or BR2 players, the fun might actually get snatched out of your hands to some person with a BAR or MG34 mowing all of you down. However, it is literally the exact opposite if you get opted into a BR5 match it's because BR5 equipment is much, much better than the now more inferior BR3 equipment since a Sherman 2 will almost always obliterate any tank in a low tier match. However, as soon as they get up tiered and it meets a Tiger 2, Tiger 1, anything really, or even a Panther, its fate is already set and it is basically defenseless and cannot fight back against them. The same goes for equipment, for instance the BR3 player with a BAR compared to a German BR4 player with the MG34 Patronentrommel. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, and even if you look at the low BR perspective, imagine you have a simple Car 98 rifle and then all of a sudden you come up against an M1 Garand close quarters, you might still have a chance, but you're not going to have the same chance statistically because the M1 Garand has much more superior advantage to the Car 98 because it is semi-automatic compared to a simple bolt action. This means there's no real upside to playing BR3. Whilst even if you do get down into a low tier match, you might have loads of fun, but you'll probably be very unaware of the consequences that you're having on the playing time and playing experience of other low tier players who have just started playing the game. Same goes for high BRs. Here you're probably never going to want to get high tiered if you're a BR3 player, as you most likely end up coming across BR5 equipment that is just plainly unfair looking at your Lee Enfield number 4 bolt action rifle compared to an FG42 select action full automatic rifle. Another major downside to being a BR3 player is that you will rarely level up all of your equipment to a specific BR because you'll almost always have one piece of equipment e.g. the BAR unlocked but that will drag your whole army regardless if it has BR1 equipment to BR3 or BR4 or BR5. This means that you have to be incredibly careful with your loadouts and also look at the BR information on the top of the factions or on the start button. Anyways guys, that is it uh, for this video today. And I have decided that I do want to keep on uploading videos on YouTube. And yeah, basically please like and subscribe if you want to of course. and. Yeah, that, that would help me a lot uh, today. Uh, yeah, it just helped me a lot. And also, may I just add that there's also been a recent buff for America weapons in terms of their sights. And if anybody tells you that you should use the M1 carbine, just know that they're wrong. And again, I'd like to know what your guys' thoughts are of my mic, mic quality. I've got a new mic and uh, I just want to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So yeah, thank you guys for watching the video again. Please like and subscribe if you want to and have a great day.